Good morning, everyone. Welcome to TDF Wellbeing Webinars. My name is Gigi, and I'm here with you today on behalf of the Disability Foundation. Um, please remember to check with your doctor before embarking on any exercise program. And I'm here to today to deliver a relaxing physical activity program. We'll be together for about half an hour. I'm honored that today is Mindfulness Monday. Mindfulness Monday is an awareness initiative that promotes physical activity in order to cre create awareness of mental and physical well-being. So by embarking on some physical activity, you will also be increasing your mental awareness. Um, let's see, make sure that um, your, 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 your chat box, your video link are all switched off. So you can see me, but I can't see you. Anything that you need to ask or say or question, please email therapy support at tdf.org.uk. That's therapy support at tdf.org.uk. We will always try to respond to any comments and we will gear our sessions according to your needs. Let's see. Mm, please pace yourself according to your own ability. If the exercises are too challenging, slow down and I will give you options as we go through it. Remember, you are in charge of yourself and you can pace your exercises according to your ability. It's Mindfulness Monday after all. Um, so make yourself comfortable and we'll finish at about 12.30. Without further ado, let's set up. So we have our block, our blanket, already for us. And we're looking for always for great posture. So usually in my sessions, I begin with balancing a yoga block or something light on top of your head. And that holds the chin parallel. It holds the head straight and it positions the body the spine is placed right over the hips and in line with the neck and the head. Right. So we're in position there. The next thing is some breathing. We link our fingers to the front of our rib cage and we draw in, breathing in. Fully into the rib cage and breathing out and breathing in as the fingertips come together. Fully into the sides and back of the rib cage and breathing out. Throughout these exercises, we don't want the, the shoulders to be tensed, but to relax the shoulders. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in. Breathing out, always hugging those lower ribs in and bringing the belly button in towards the spine. So it's a gentle pull in towards the spine. Now the position of our legs. You can see my feet are directly in line with my hips. They are hip width apart. And let's find the balance on the feet by swaying gently forward. Oh, I'm going to double over. And gently back even lifting the toes at the front to see that you are well balanced. So again, gently forward, gently back onto the heels until we come to a position where we stable in the middle of our feet. And now we roll the shoulders back, releasing any tension, relaxing the tops of the shoulders, stretching out the spine. Rolling backwards, rolling forwards, opening the chest, relaxing those muscles. And from here, I want you to take the right hand 
all the way over the head to touch the left ear as we gently draw the head towards the right hand shoulder. Again, there should be no tension in the shoulder, but relaxing, drawing the ears and the shoulder away from each other, and breathing in, breathing out as we expand and contract the ribcage, taking time for ourselves, be mindful of ourselves, and the left hand over to the right ear, gently drawing the head down on the shoulders, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the um, head and keeping a space between the ears and the tops of the left hand shoulder. And then we imagine that at the tip of our nose there is a pencil and we're just going to draw circles with the nose, stretching out the neck, the vertebrae in the neck. And every time I do this exercise, I always feel the tension released in my neck and the crunch crunch of the vertebra as they stretch and pull apart and relax. We spend a lot of our time on our mobiles perhaps or on our computer always in forward posture and this is an opportunity to stretch out, stretch back and use some of the muscles that perhaps we're not using during the day. And from here, we're going to put our palms, we're going to release the hands with the palms facing the front and taking the right arm up, around and back. So what I need you to feel in this position is not that you're simply lifting the arm, but that you're rotating the whole arm, including the humerus out and alongside your body as we lift. Does that feel different? As we lift the arm up, lift it back and into original position. And the other way, the arm up, all the way over. Good stretch. Coming forward, releasing the arms and the left hand again, rotating the arm out, up, over, releasing any tension that there is there, stretching out and again, same way, over and back, and then the other way. Let's do that twice, all the way over. Last time, all the way over. So we've warmed up our shoulders a little bit. Our knees are relaxed, so they're not tensed or locked. And let's come to the side for some um, shallow squats. So last week we learned about the alignment from the neck to the base of the spine, and one long, one long um, line, as though, imagine, visualize a ruler. So a long, straight ruler, not dipping the head, but keeping the neck and the eyes aligned to a spot in front of you. Shallow bend in the knees, um, lift the toes, make sure that you're well balanced between the front and the back of the, toe, of the feet. And also, you should always be able to see your toes in front of you. So not leaning too far forward, but pushing up the tailbone so that the, the toes are visible. Lifting the right arm up as high as you can. The challenge is to get it up in line with the ear. And down. And lift. And bend. Tailbone out. Have a look. You can see the toes. And the left hand straight out in front of you. All the way up. If you can, in line with your ear, your left ear and down. Remember to relax the shoulders so we're not pulling the arms up but creating the space between the ears and the tops of the shoulders. And now let's come up and again bending the knees, pushing back on the tailbone, long straight spine, lifting both arms up in line with the ears. 
Some of you may only be able to go here, some may be able to go a little higher, and some may be in line with the knees. And back. Whew. Let's try that two more times. If I face the front, you can see what that looks like. So feet hip width apart, pushing back on the tailbone, relaxing the knees, both hands at the side, long straight spine as we lift the arms up. Breathe, expanding the rib cage, contracting the rib cage, and release. And last time, bending, pushing back on the tailbone, long straight, lots of rules, lots of rules, and taking the arms up as high as you can. Remember to breathe putting the belly button into the spine as we come to standing. We're going to do a few roll down now. Roll downs are knees to chest, to sp um, lower spine, all the way down. So let's take, let's hold our elbows. And if you want to watch me first, it's your chin to chest as we roll down one vertebra at a time. Feeling the stretch all through the spine, but especially in the lower spine, the lower part of the spine. Breathing in, breathing out. If you can or you wish to, you can drop your hands as far down as you can and take them ahead with you. And then let's roll up one vertebra at a time. Soft knees lead from the lower spine. One vertebra at a time. As we roll all the way up to standing. With the head coming up last and the chin parallel to the ground. So this time I want you to imagine that your spine is like a string of pearls and each of those vertebrae represents one of those pearls. Try and concentrate on the string between the pearls. So we're really stretching out the spine. We're really creating space between each of those vertebrae. Again, hands to the side or grasp your elbows. Chin to chest. As we roll down, leading from lower spine, one vertebra at a time. Holding hands, hands at the side, until we come to a position where we have released as much of the spine as we can, as we're comfortable with. Let's breathe here for five. Expanding the rib cage, contracting the rib cage. One more deep breath. Pulling the belly button up, 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 towards the spine. And restacking the vertebra. One vertebra, one pull at a time. One spoke of the wheel at a time. Bringing the head up. Last. That should, that should feel really good on the lower back. Nice, stretched. And once more, chin to chest. You can hold the elbows, hold the hands, hands at the side, chin to chest. As we roll down, take your time, pace yourself as far as you can. And enjoy the stretch when you reach your lowest when you reach the point 
within your within your range. Four, three, two, one, and we restick the spine one vertebra at a time. With the head coming up last. It's a wonderful stretch to do. I try and do that every day. And from here, we're going to go into balance. So let's reposition ourselves, feet hip width apart. Transferring the weight onto the left hand foot. Let's take our hands to the tops of our hips. Can you feel that bony part of your hips? We're gonna try and keep that as stable as we can. So we're not looking to lift the right foot off and lean to the left hand side, but to lift the right hand off, keeping our hips, our hip points stable. In fact, you can imagine that you've got two beacons of light in the front of your hips facing forwards, and we want the beacons to remain in that static position. So, transferring the weight to the left hand side, we need to drop the right leg down in order to lift it up, lifting the toes of the right hand side, looking at a position in front of you, breathing in, loosening, don't lock the left hand knee. When you can, you can lift the foot up, toe off the floor. <gasps> you did it. And if you can, you can lift the foot higher and down and we transfer the weight to the left hand side. Again, fingers on the hips. Loosen the left knee a little bit, don't lock it. Focus on a point in front of you. It's difficult to do if I'm giving instructions, but there it is, let's see how we go. And lift the toes up or lift the knee so that it's in line with the hips and gently down. Well done. And again, this time we're going to rotate the ankles if we can, so we can rotate from this position. We can lift the leg up and rotate and down and the left hand side transferring the weight, lifting the foot, and rotating those ankles. Well done. And from here, we're gonna to come to seated. As you make your own way down, a block is a very useful thing to have. If your spine is not straight, or you don't feel comfortable sitting like this or like this, sometimes it's easier to get that aligned by sitting on a block, which gives support to your back. We're going to come to stretching the feet out in front of us, or the legs out in front of us, met with the part. Pulling the belly button towards the spine, using the block if we need to. If the legs don't go out straight or don't feel comfortable, you can always bend the feet, trying to keep the toes facing towards the sky. But if you can stretch, that's one of the options. And then hands out at the side. And we're going to do a spine stretch to the right. So keeping the hands aligned, they're always out at a T-shape, not dropped. Shoulder height, foot above, straight. Pointing those fingers in opposite direction, really stretching out the shoulders as we rotate or twist to the right, taking our spine, our neck and our head with us. 
breathing in, breathing out, and all the way back, and then to the left. I want you to watch my toes because they remain static facing the ceiling. The stretch doesn't come from the toes, it comes from the spine. So this would be what I want you to avoid. <sighs> Something like that. Try and keep the legs static, whether they bent or straight. So rotating to the left, originating the stretch from the lower spine, breathing in, putting the belly button towards the spine as we look over our left hand shoulder. Oh, wonderful stretch. And release the stretch back to the center. And let's go to the right again, taking into account that the rotation comes from the spine. And back to the center. And to the left. And back to the center. Well done. We have a few minutes to go. So before we cool down, let's lie down on our backs. Um, so it's sitting up, knees bent, toes flat on the floor if you can, hands behind the hips, and we're gently gonna lower ourselves back onto the floor. Breathing in, breathing out, releasing those vertebrae, one spine, one vertebra at a time. Remember that string of chords. Well done. Take a full body stretch. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the toes pointing to the ceiling, the hands above our shoulders or in line with our shoulders, fingers pointing towards the ceiling, thumbs out towards the floor. So if you want to watch me, this is a bit of coordination and something fun to do. Taking the thumbs slowly, slowly behind the head for a full body stretch. We're going to try and get both thumbs to touch the ground behind us at the same time. Ah, let's just see. <laughs> Try that for yourself. Who was able to do that? When you get there, let's make sure that our spine is straight, our lower ribs are hugged in, our belly button is pulled towards our spine and enjoy that stretch. And from here, we're gonna take the hands to the side of our body, bending the right knee, bending the left knee, taking our third finger as close to the bottom of our heels as we can, just to touch the heels. Using the block, if you wish, to keep our knees aligned, hugging the block or hugging your knees or your inner thighs in as we lift the lower spine, as we lift the spine one vertebra at a time off the floor or shoulder bridge. And releasing one vertebra at a time, full spine on the floor, and again, one vertebra at a time to lift the spine off the floor onto the shoulder blades. We're looking for a long straight spine from the sternum all the way to the pubic bone, lifting, 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 not dropping, but lifting the buttocks up, 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 
blankets between your knees, you can take that away. Left knee bent on the floor, right ankle over the left thigh. Hands, be, hands in the triangle, behind the left thigh, bringing the left leg up off the ground and towards us. Or if that's too hard, you can keep the ankle on the floor, uh, the, the, the left foot on the floor, and just stretch the hands as far as you can behind the left thigh. And feel the stretch in the outer right hand uh, leg. Lovely stretch. Bringing the left leg closer to your chest. You can take the hands over the left knee, if that's in your range. Or hands back behind the left thigh and you can lift the leg up, pointing the toes directly down behind you towards your head. Lovely stretch. Breathe. Belly button towards the spine, hugging in the lower ribs, spine imprinted on the floor, and release. The right knee bent on the floor, and the ankle of the left foot onto the right thigh. Stay like this, if that's enough of a stretch for you. Hands behind the thigh as far as you can, or right behind the, the, the right thigh, holding the fingers, clasping, interlocking the fingers, and bringing the left leg towards you for a lovely stretch on the left hand side. And again, if that's in your range, you can take interlock your fingers around the right knee. And if you want, stretching the right leg up to face the ceiling, toes pointing towards your head or to the ground behind you. Lovely stretch for the full leg. And we release both knees on the floor. Oh dear! <laughs> right, we'll end with some knee circles. So one hand on the right knee, one hand on the left knee, bringing the knees towards our chest, opening the knees in opposite directions. At the furthest point, staying in that stretch, releasing the tension in the groin muscles and the tops, the inner tops of the thighs, completing the circle, bringing the knees towards you. Pushing the knees out, opposite direction. Oh. And bringing the knees back towards you, hugging the knees towards your chest, interlocking your fingers for more of a stretch. Being mindful about yourself. Because today is Mindful Monday, I thought we could just end by releasing all the tension, stretching the legs out to touch the outer edges of your yoga or Pilates mat. Hands in the position we began with, palms facing the ceiling. Imprinting the spine onto the mat, hugging in the lower ribs. And let's just breathe. 
Well done for joining the physical activity class. On Mindful Monday. Allowing yourself to feel the benefit of the physical stretching of the activity. Remember to be mindful the rest of the day. Take time for you. Take time for yourself. If you have a moment to do some of the exercises during the week. And thank you so much for joining me. Please remain on the mat as long as you wish. And if not, look forward to seeing you next Monday, same time, same place. TDF relies on your donations. So if you enjoyed this session, please donate by going on to www.tdf.org.uk and you'll see the um, Virgin Active icon there and you're welcome to give whatever you can. Have a good week. Have a good Mindful Monday.